cheeks and Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2024 horror film Skeletons in the Closet. The film is directed by Asif Akbar and it stars Terence Howard, Cuba Gooding Jr., Udo Kier, Louis Mandalore, Valerie Ortiz and Sally Kirkland. Right, the film follows um, a family. So you've got Terence Howard as the father... You've got Valerie Ortiz as the mother, and they do have um, a young daughter called Jenny. Now, the daughter has had a serious illness in the past, um, and it turns out that this illness has returned um, with a vengeance, and a, the daughter is very, very ill indeed. And this news comes right on the day that the father, played by Terence Howard, Mark, loses his job. So, in an act of desperation... He goes to his brother, Andre, uh, played by Cuba Gooding Jr., who's just got out of prison, who knows a local, a local loan shark that will probably lend him the money he needs for the medical bills for the daughter, etc. Um, he gets the, some of the money that he needs from this loan shark, but this gets him into some real, real trouble um, because he can't really afford to pay the money back. All the while, um, the mother who seems to have been haunted her whole life by spirits, um, keeps seeing these spirits in the house that seem to be kind of following her and her daughter about. Um, eventually, they kind of go down the supernatural route to try and find a solution to the terminally ill terminally ill's daughter's condition. Um, and this leads to uh, a decision that they are given that there is um, a way to help their daughter, but it comes with a, at a heavy price. Right, what are my thoughts on skeletons in the closet? Well, uh, what kind of drew me initially to this film was the cast. Uh, I mean, many of us, when, we're, when we are you know, deciding what films to watch and things like that, um, sometimes you're kind of drawn to the poster or the synopsis. Um, or the cast, or sometimes it's a combination of all of those things. And for me, I was I was interested in this for, for the cast, really, initially. We've got two Oscar winners here. We've got Cuba Gooding Jr. and Terrence Howard. Um, and I think Sally Kirkland, who was nominated for an Oscar. I might be wrong on that. but um, So you've got a talented cast of actors here on this film. And it sounds an interesting premise. Uh, when you kind of read the synopsis on IMDb, it says, Haunted by a malevolent spirit since childhood, a desperate mother allows herself to become possessed in order to save the life of her term little daughter. And that kind of explains it quite well. And I thought, well, this this some in this could be interesting. Um, and then you look at the score in IMDb, and it's like drastically low. And you're kind of thinking, I mean, IMDb can be sometimes quite low in the scores. But um, I thought, well, I, I'm going to give this one a go. Um, and I have to say that I, it's not a, often I massively agree with IMDb scores, but I, I don't think they're a million miles off here. This this film is a real chore. Um, it's a mess of a film. Um, it it kind of jumps between thriller and supernatural horror, and it doesn't do either of them particularly well. It doesn't do justice to either those either of those genres. Me personally, I think this film probably would have been better as a thriller. The whole idea of you know Terence Howard's character losing his job, needing money desperately, borrowing it from the wrong people, you know, and then putting him and his family's lives at risk and all this kind of stuff that you know there's there's a there's a movie right there if they'd have kind of you know thought about it a bit more but to kind of blend that into this kind of supernatural stuff um it just felt at odds with both you know the thriller and the horror they just didn't blend together at all in this film and it, it just didn't work it didn't mix so you've got scenes of, you know, Terence Howard, you know, being all dramatic and stuff about the situation that he's in and, you know, um, how is he going to get out of this situation? And then you've got the next minute, you know, the wife's walking around the corner and watching a spirit standing over a daughter and you're just kind of like, it just doesn't fit. It doesn't work. And it's not scary either. I'd never felt at one point in this film scared. Um, and then when you kind of get to the point where... Um, 
they kind of make that choice, you know, that you've got a terminal daughter and they're kind of given the choice by this choice. And what kind of made me chuckle a bit is they're given this choice by Udo Kier, who is a legend, but is not the most calming person. I mean, he puts on an ultra creepy performance here. Um, and they kind of, he's giving this proper proposition to these parents, you know, if you do this, yes, it will help your daughter, but this is the consequences. Um, but he does it in, <laughs> in a really creepy way. Um, and then they, obviously I suppose most parents would do that in that situation, but I'm not sure I'd be so quick to do it if it was Udo Kier presenting me with the, uh, you know, this ulterior motive sort of thing. Um, the performances here are a bit odd as well. I mean, you've got Cuba Gooding Jr., who obviously is, you know, a very talented actor, or he certainly was, Oscar winner, and, you know, he had charisma, you know, coming out of every orifice in the 90s and early noughties. He was very, very good, very popular, and, you know, um, to see him kind of reduced to bit parts in movies like this, I mean, he, he really didn't need to be in this film. Um, and then you've got, Terence Howard as well, another Oscar winner, um, and I don't think it's fair to say he uh, phoned his performance in, but at the same time, you know, it didn't blow your socks off either, the performance. At, at times it feels like he's trying, and at other times it feels like, you know, he's realised what kind of movie he's in and thought, oh, sod it, I'm not even going to bother with this. Um, for me, the only consistent performance in this film was by Valerie Ortiz, the mother. Um, but this whole storyline of like her being haunted since a child, and it's kind of followed her through to adulthood, and it's kind of now infecting her daughter or sort of thing, it just didn't make any sense, and it didn't really go anywhere interesting with that. And it certainly, <coughs> excuse me, it certainly didn't explain it well. Um, this whole, you know, spiritual thing that's been following her whole, her whole life. I just, um, I just couldn't click with this film. Um, and I don't think it's, it was just me. And it's, it's also packed full of dream sequences. And I hate dream sequences. You know, when there's a sequence where they're being chased by what looks like a scarecrow sort of thing, a creepy scarecrow. Um, and, you know, they're being chased and you're just thinking, well, that's a dream. And then a few seconds later, yeah, they wake up. And this happens two or three times in the film, maybe more, you know, where, you know, some half creep is happening, but it's a dream. Um, and that's the only time this film ever gets close to being what you would describe as um, having a scare uh, 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 is during the dream sequences. But they, they just drive me around the bloody bend, the dream sequences. They very, very rarely are an effective tool in movies. It's just lazy, I think, most of the time. So it's not a film I can recommend, this one. It, 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 it was a drag to watch. It was fairly dull. It was pretty boring. The thriller and the horror elements don't work in the film, and there's nothing massively impressive about any of the performances either. So trust me, you will not miss anything if you give this film uh, a wide berth. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll be back with more reviews and content on the channel very, very soon.